in the previous sets of videos we've discussed about intermolecular forces and thermal energy and we've also talked about the various types of intermolecular forces which are present. In this video we are going to be talking about intermolecular forces versus thermal interactions. But before that let's basically understand the differences of solids, liquids and gases. So solids, liquids and gases, uh, they basically are the, the, their condition depends upon the temperature and pressure. So solids, so MP means melting point and BP is boiling point and RT is the room temperature. So melting point of solids is above room temperature in atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure is basically the, the pressure exerted by the atmosphere. And room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So the melting point of solids is generally above room temperature and that is in atmospheric pressure. For example, uh, metals, all the metals, well, except for gallium and um, mercury, I mean, most of the metals exist as solids. And like, for example, iron, iron is a solid and its melting point is quite high. Liquids, on the other hand, have melting points below room temperature. Water is the best example. The uh, melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius. So after 0, I mean, when the temperature is above 0, it obviously turns to water. So, and the boiling point has to be above room temperature. So it does not change to gaseous state at room temperature. On the other hand, it stays as a liquid in room temperature. Boiling point for gases is below room temperature. For example, I think hydrogen as a liquid has a very low, it has a very low uh, boiling point. Like it's in the negative, uh, negative 50-ish, I guess, uh, or I think it's probably lower, but the point it is, has a very low boiling point. So the solids, liquids and gases also vary with respect to the intermolecular forces. So solids have the highest intermolecular force of attraction. Let's just draw the structure or like the arrangement of molecules in solids, liquids and gases that will help us understand this concept better. So obviously in solids these molecules are very close together so they have a higher intermolecular force of attraction than liquids. Liquids are actually farther apart and in case of gases they are even more far apart than liquids. So there is obviously a difference in terms of the arrangement. So states of matter uh, before I forget, uh, when we talked about temperature, there exists a, exists a particular point called this the triple point uh, where a solid, liquid and gas of a particular type of molecule can exist at the same time. So for water, the triple point is at a specific temperature and pressure obviously and for water it's at 0 0.001 degree Celsius and uh, 4.58 millimeter, uh, sorry, mmHg pressure, mercury pressure and at this temperature and pressure water, water vapor as well as ice can exist at the same time. So that's called as triple point and there are various other states of matter that do exist like you have plasma but we'll be focusing on solids, liquids and gases alone. So the intermolecular forces for solids is going to be the highest compared to liquids and then compared to gases. Uh, so let's start with gases. Now gases have a very negligible molecular interaction between them because the molecules are far apart. So they have the highest thermal energy. So let's just write this. So they have a highest thermal energy and they have the lowest intermolecular force of attraction. intermolecular force of attraction is actually quite low or negligible. So molecules actually in gases they tend to move in all directions and there is there are a lot of gaps in between molecules. So what happens is we can compress the gas the particles of the gas because of the large amount of intermolecular spaces we can actually compress gases but compress Compressing the gases alone will not 
will not convert the gas to a liquid. So there has to be a decrease in temperature. So when there is a decrease in temperature, what happens is, um, when there is a decrease in temperature, the thermal energy of the gas is also going to decrease. And because there is a decrease in the thermal energy of the gas, the gas gets converted to a liquid. I'll rephrase it, I mean, I'll redo that again. So, gases have spaces in between them. So, they are compressible in nature. That is something we know. So, gases, when pressure is applied, that does not mean that the gas will convert to a liquid. The temperature has to decrease. If you remember, we discussed when we talked about thermal energy, we said, uh, or I, I said, thermal energy is directly proportional to the temperature. So, when there is an increase in temperature, there is an increase in thermal energy. Correct. So, when we decrease the temperature, the thermal energy will also decrease and this helps the conversion of a gas to a liquid. So, uh, gases have a highest thermal energy and the intermolecular force is low. These molecules, the molecules of gas can move freely and they can be compressed. The next one is liquids. Liquids, the, inter, the intermolecular forces See, first of all, the intermolecular forces is present. Uh, it helps push the particles together. It's an attractive force, if you will. Whereas a thermal energy is for the repulsion. And the balance of these two forces will lead to the various states of matter. In gases, you have a high thermal energy and you have a low intermolecular force. In case of liquids, the intermolecular force... as well as the thermal energy is balancing out. Which means the intermolecular force is not as much as solids. The thermal energy is not as high as gases. So these two forces are basically balancing out and that's why you have liquids. So the molecules, they are not as free as gases but they are not as constricted as solids. So there is, uh, so when these, if you remember when we were talking about the intermolecular forces being repulsive, uh, we also study, I mean we also saw that when the molecules of liquids and gases, sorry liquids and solids, when they are pushed very close together, they tend to have repulsive forces of interaction and that is why the liquids cannot be as compressed as gases. Gases are highly compressible, whereas liquids are not highly compressible. That's something you already learned. But the reason for that is because the molecules start to have the repulsive interactions as well. So this repulsive interaction will make sure that the liquid does not get compressed. And the bonds in between liquids... Um, Liquids uh, break and they constantly make. So because of that, liquids do not have a rigid structure and they don't have a shape. But they have a definite attractive energy and that is why they have a particular volume. So when we talk about gases, if we have a box this size and a box this size and we have the same amount of gas present, the gas will basically, you know, occupy the entire area. So you have a proper amount of attractive force present in case of liquids and that is why it has a definite volume but it does not have a definite shape due to the constant breaking and forming of bonds. Now solids we obviously know they have the highest intermolecular forces but the thermal energy is going to be low. So these do not move easily, but they basically oscillate in their own position. So they vibrate constantly. And the net force, however, since the intermolecular force is so high, the net force is obviously going to be attractive. And the molecules, as they come very close, obviously the intermolecular force tends to become repulsive. That's what we learned for liquids as well. Now, the low thermal energy cannot overcome the strong intermolecular forces and because of that the molecules cannot move freely. 
So the thermal energy is so low that it can't overcome the intermolecular forces, which is actually particular, which is actually very high. And that in turn makes sure that these molecules cannot move freely. And the last one is when heated. So when heated, the molecular, I mean, the thermal motion will increase and the, you know, I mean, the intermolecular <coughs> and the solid molecules will get more thermal energy and that in turn will lead to the conversion to liquids. If you remember when we had spoken about the introduction, I asked you a question. Why does a solid have to convert to a liquid when we heat it? And why does a liquid have to convert to a gas? That is all because of the two forces of intermolecular force as well as the thermal energy. So when we talk about, let's take for example water, okay, in uh, below zero degrees it exists as below zero degrees celsius it exists as ice which is a solid above basically room temperature i'm just going to say room temperature it exists as water and above 100 degrees celsius or <clears throat> we're talking about a lab setting generally you have water vapor in the air as well but it can exist as water vapor we're talking about boiling basically So here, if you notice, there is an increase in temperature. So when there is an increase in temperature, there is an increase in thermal energy. When the thermal energy tends to increase, then the intermolecular force, and obviously it can overcome this intermolecular force, and that is when solid will melt to form a liquid. So basically for molecules or for arrangements which have a very high intermolecular force they will obviously require a lot of energy for that conversion from a solid to a liquid so basically thermal energy the order goes gas is more than solid oh sorry liquid is more than solid whereas intermolecular force is going to be the opposite solid is more than liquid is more than gas so to you know conclude uh, we have three states of matter solids liquids and gases and they vary with respect to their condition in a particular temperature and pressure so solids have a melting point above room temperature and atmospheric pressure notice we're talking about pressure because pressure plays a very important role when we talk about boiling points and melting points liquids on the other hand have melting point below room temperature and boiling point above room temperature whereas gases have a boiling point below room temperature in atmospheric pressure so basic idea behind this whole concept is intermolecular force and thermal energy intermolecular force between solids is very high thermal energy is low there is a balance of intermolecular force and thermal energy in liquids whereas in gases they have a highest thermal energy because thermal energy is basically to do with movement of molecules and molecules tend to move very freely in gases compared to solids and liquids and the intermolecular force of attraction is actually quite low so basically uh, solids when uh, they i mean the thermal energy cannot overcome the intermolecular force and because of that you know it stays in one place the molecules just move in one place whereas in case of liquids they actually move to an extent due to the formation and breaking of bonds but liquids as such they have a certain amount of attractive force and because of that they have a particular volume and in case of gases, they move very freely and they have the highest amount of thermal energy. And the reason we have the whole interconversion of states of matter is because of the thermal energy. When you have heat, when you start heating the solid, what happens is the, th the temperature is increasing, the thermal energy will also increase. And that in turn is going to help it overcome the intermolecular force. And the moment it does overcome the intermolecular force, it gets converted to a liquid. And obviously, the liquid is going to gain that and it in turn is going to you know i mean if it's heated it's going to gain more thermal energy and because it's going to gain that thermal energy it's going to get converted to gas now when we talked about gas we also spoke about one important thing that pressure alone is not important temperature is also important so when there is a decrease in temperature there will be a decrease in thermal energy and that's how gases can be converted to liquids in conclusion thermal energy is order as gas 
has more thermal energy than liquid, which has more thermal energy than solid. Whereas intermolecular force of attraction is highest for the solid compared to the liquid and gas. With that, we're done with intermolecular force versus thermal interactions. In the next video, we will be talking about the gaseous state.